Do your racing wheelchair hand rims look like this? Let's fix that. This is Raymond Jones with Wheels of Fire Wheelchair Racing. Wheelchair racers use special gloves and metal rings coated in rubber on the rear wheels of their racing wheelchair to propel their chair forward. The friction from pushing breaks down that rubber coating so that it has to be replaced over time. What we want to give you in this video is our step-by-step -step process for replacing the hand rim rubber on these metal rings. In the description, we've broken the outline down into some timestamps so that you can go back to parts that you need to review as you walk through the process. Our suggestion, however, is you probably want to watch the video in its entirety before you begin the process. This video fits in a playlist that you'll find on our channel. You can either click this card or in the description below. In the process that we're giving you, you're going to be working with sharp tools and heat and chemicals, so we're asking, please use common sense and safety and make sure that you review the warning labels on all products. With that said, let's jump right in. One of the steps for replacing hand rim rubber on a wheelchair racing hand rim is that you have to get the old rubber off. The contact cement has got a real strong bond holding the rubber to the metal push ring. So what you want to do is heat it up. The easiest way to heat it up, I mean, you could use something like a heat gun, but the simplest way is to use an oven. So what you do is take your oven and set it to the lowest possible temperature, warm the oven up to that temperature, and then put the push rim right in the oven and set it right on the rack and then close it. Now it doesn't smell the best, but if you'll wait about 10 minutes, then it will soften up the contact cement so that you can remove it. Now we've had this push rim in the oven for about 10 minutes, and so I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna show you how to remove it. What you're gonna want is you're gonna want some good heavy duty gloves or you're gonna want an oven mitt so that you don't burn your hands, and then you're gonna need a pair of pliers so you can get a hold of that rubber and peel it right off the rim. So let's just go for it, and I'll show you how easy it is. So, the push rim is now warmed up, and so I'm looking for the place where the two rims come together with a seam, and then I'm getting a good hand on it, and if you need a pair of pliers, you can grab it, but I was able to get a hold of this just with my hand and these gloves. So now, you just give it a good hard pull, and you'll notice that it separates fairly easily and beautifully. There you go, old rubber removed from the metal push ring. We're at the place now in the process where we need to prepare the rubber that we're going to put on the push rim surface. Now there's two kinds that you can use. Some racers use rubber tubing that you can purchase online mostly, and when you get it, it may not be split. So what you have to do is take a pair of scissors, and then you're gonna work your way lengthwise down the tubing, causing there to be a split in the tubing so that you can wrap it around the push rim, gluing it in place as you go. But we particularly like using tires because the tires come with tread, so you get a little extra grip with that. So this is just the brand that we have because it has a good tread on it. And before you do the work of gluing it on, you're gonna to need to prepare the tire. Now, if you'll notice, there's the valve stem, just like any other tubular tire. At the valve stem, you're going to cut away the tire on each side of the valve stem. Now, I know some people may be saying, are you kidding? I'm gonna cut a perfectly good tire? Absolutely you are. You're gonna cut a perfectly good tire so that you have perfectly good rubber on the push rim of your chair. So working on each side of the valve stem, giving yourself a little bit of a gap because there's usually something there to reinforce so it's not too much hard work. You just take the scissors and work your way right through. Now, this you need a good set of scissors for this because this is not easy to cut. There we go. 
And then I want to cut the other side of the valve stem because I'm going to cut the valve stem out of the tire. All right, so we've got it cut loose. Now, these are sewn ins, so the tube is going to be inside of the tire. So what I want to do is straighten the tire out, and I'm going to pull this tube out. You have to really get hold of it and work it to slide it all the way out. So we pulled the tube completely out. Now what you need to do is you need to prepare the tire by cutting out the underside where the tire glues to the rim. So here's a place where you can learn from our mistake. As I was cutting the tire, I didn't realize that I was making it too wide. That way whenever I would wrap it around, let me put it down here where you can see it. When I wrap it around, there's too much surface there so that they touch each other and overlap. I don't want that, and so what I have to do is to cut away more of the edge. If you'll notice, on this tread, there's a little line right here where the rubber tread of the tire begins on each side. So for this particular Vitrola brand, you probably want to cut right along that line instead. What we've done here is we've applied some contact cement to the hand rim and a little bit of contact cement to the back side of the tread of the tire. Now what we're going to do, we've waited the recommended amount of time that's on the label of the bottle, and we're going to connect the two pieces together. The thing to remember with contact cement is once you've waited the amount of time, they're tacking, when you put them together, they're going to really want to try to start holding right then. So try to align it well. The alignment you're looking for is you want the center of the tread to be on the center of the outside edge of the push rim. So let's make that happen. So we contact the two pieces together and we get that started. Then to hold the very beginning of the wrapping, we want to use a zip tie or a wire tie. Now what I like to do is to just put the wire tie together loosely and then you turn the whole thing upside down and move the box of the zip tie to the back side of the hand rim. The reason for that is you don't want this box being in your way when you're trying to push. You can cut these off whenever you finish, when everything finishes drying, but I find they don't get in the way with them in the back. It helps to hold that little end that likes to separate easily. It just makes a really good fit. We'll cut the little end off to keep it out of our way. And that's the beginning. All right, here's what I've done. I have applied contact cement to the back side of the tire and contact cement on the push rim or the hand rim around to this first mounting step. So I want to show you the process that I use for putting the two pieces together. First of all, I keep them separated and have to tuck it underneath the rim here a little so that it doesn't touch before it should. Then when I start putting it on, the trick again is to line up the tread as best as you can so that it centers on the hand rim. So I'm doing just this little part right here and I'm pressing it around so that it sticks to it. Now, I think your favorite friend to this whole process is going to be electrical tape. Electrical tape is a little bit stretchy and it's sticky, but it's not going to leave much of a residue on the tire that you're taping to it to make sure that it stays in place while the, dry is, the, the glue is drying. So I'm going to wrap the electrical tape around the zip tie that I have in place, and then I'm just centering up and then wrapping around as I go. You want to pull tight on the electrical tape so that it snugs this down really well. And then you'll, your glue, of course, is going to want to stick along the way, but that's okay. You can just peel it back up and stick it around, hold a section, and tape a section. Now notice I'm getting this good and tight around here. While I'm wrapping this, I'll let you know that the drying time on contact cement 
it's going to say 24 hours for it to dry completely. Just keep in mind, you're sealing out all of the air with this electrical tape, so it may take longer for it to dry completely. All right. Again, line it up, stick it to, and wrap it around. The side you have to be a little careful with when you're wrapping it is the inside edge here because I'm going with the electrical tape this direction. You have to kind of press this down with your fingers and wrap it around as you go. Now, I'll give you a view of the back. That's what the back looks like when it's all wrapped up like it needs to be. Now, I'm going to go all the way to this first mount just so that you can see how I wrap the tape around the mount. Let me show you. Around the mount on this side, and then bring it back and round the mount on the other side. And then you just bring it to the side of the mount where you're going to continue on and keep on applying glue, sticking it down, folding it around, wrapping it with the tape. Applying glue, both sides weight, stick it down, wrap the tape around to hold it tight. That's basically the whole process. So you want to just do a section at a time so that this doesn't become all coated, then you have glue all up your arms. It also doesn't become difficult to manage. So just a section at a time and glue it down and wrap it as you go. Okay, so we're back to our push rims, our hand rims on day two. And what we did was, uh, yesterday we finished up wrapping the electrical tape all the way around and we came to the end and just like at the beginning we added a zip tie, electrical tie, to the push rim to hold down the very end and then wrapped all the glued push rubber surface down with electrical tape. Now what we want to show you is how to take the tape off. It's had enough time for the glue to cure according to the label on the contact cement full cure time overnight for us and so now what we're going to do is show you how to take the tape off what you want is a good sharp razor blade a utility knife and then you're going to you can see here we've already started we just made an incision on the back side of the push rim why the back side because the push surface edges come around but they don't touch one another here on the back side and if you cut here you'll be cutting the tape but you surely don't want to cut the rubber surface that you just put on here so you're going to use this and then a little trick is that you can use the edge of the razor blade and just fit it underneath of the tape and just carefully pick it up so that you're not picking up the rubber surface but just the electrical tape. And then you're going to peel it up and then get the blade out of your way so you don't cut your fingers. And then just start peeling up the electrical tape and you're going to unwrap the entire hand rim all the way around. Once we have that done, we'll get back to you. So now what you're going to want to do is to go and inspect the back where the edges meet the push rim and just make sure they're all the way down. What you'll notice is like I've got a little spot there that it wants to come up a little bit, but this is down pretty good. So you just work your fingers around through there and you just want to push on a little and see if it's starting to come up at all. So these are places where it is beginning to come up, then you just take a little of the contact cement and dab a little down in there and then just run a little piece of tape around there to hold that and let that dry. Once it dries completely, then you know all of the edges. Why to go to all this trouble? The reason is, if you hold the edges down, when you get in the heat of summer, those little edges aren't going to be peeling back on you. So it's important to go through this kind of detail. Once you have all of that taped down and re-glued and make sure that it's all secure, then you can take that tape off and then reinstall the hand rims onto the wheels. And there you have it, the whole process from start to finish for replacing the rubber surface on wheelchair racing push rims. This is maintenance, and maintenance is just as important in wheelchair racing as training. I mean, who wants equipment failure to be the reason why you don't win the race? We at Wheels of Fire want your whole heart, mind, body, and equipment to perform at peak so that whether you're just pushing for fun or you want to compete on the world stage, Every bit of your power is translating into forward motion. So we hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was, click like. Also, you can subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Raymond Jones with Wheels of Fire saying, keep them rolling.